Hello, I made this interior in uh, about three hours, a little bit more than three hours, and I figured I'd show you how I did it and how you might do the same thing. Um, and basically I'm going to be talking a lot about asset packs, so if, uh, if that will bother you, stop watching now. The asset packs I'm using are the Medieval Construction Kit, which is 40 bucks, and the Fantasy Interiors Kit, which is 60 bucks. I think those prices are reasonable, but if you are scrapped for cash, that might be too much. Uh, either way, I wanted to show you the basics. This is a house I built for a librarian, her husband, and her son, and or, or daughter, whatever. And I just wanted to show you what I've done, what some of the weaknesses are, what some of the strengths are, and that sort of stuff. The first thing I wanted to show you is the ceiling. The ceiling has some depth to it. Um, it's got some cross beams, some canted uh, ceilings, some decorative beams, and uh, some uh, um, chandeliers. I really think that if you're building a fantasy setting, you need to pay a lot of attention to the roof. Uh, first off, it adds a lot of immersion to be able to see that this is, you know, this is a house that was built, and you can see how it was built. Uh, sorry, I knocked my mouse there. But second off, that's also valuable as, um, you know, gameplay. I'm sneaking. Aside from that, this is the entryway, and over here you've got a table and a fireplace, and over here you've got a strangely empty space, almost as if something is missing. What's missing? Well, a kitchen is missing. There's no kitchen assets in these two packs, and I couldn't find any um, fantasy kitchen packs. There are plenty of, of today kitchen packs. So there's no fire pit, no no uh, no stove. Fire pits are fire pits are archaic. You wouldn't even use them. There's no wood stove for cooking. Um, there are some some shelves that could count as counters, but there's no uh, sink. Uh, and you know you you might think of a sink in terms of running water, but they still had water in the house. Um, there's no dirty dishes. There's no anything that you would use in a kitchen. So there's no kitchen which is a shame. Uh, when you build an interior like this, the whole point is to showcase the lives and personalities of the NPCs involved. And a kitchen can go a long way to doing that if there are enough options in the kitchen. There aren't any kitchens, so there are no options, obviously. Over here you've got the bedroom, and you can see what I'm talking about with the flat roof. If your roof is flat, it feels very confined and dull, and that's what I've got here in the bedroom. Uh, the bedroom is basically just a big square, except I've tried to break it up a little bit with this sort of pseudo room. Um, over here is a very neat mirror I'd like to show you. This is a fakey mirror. I'll be replacing it with a real mirror, but this is a very nice way to do fake mirrors, so I applaud the uh, Medieval Construction Kit for their fake mirror. But you can see that there are no signs of any personality. Um, there are... I really want to be able to show the personality of the people I put in these houses, and I can't do that if I don't have anything that has a personality. What I really want is I want a giant stack of clothes. And I don't mean to wear, I mean to just have. Uh, so for example, what I really want to do is I want to be able to select a bureau like this, and there'll be a script over here with an array, and I can just drag clothing items onto the array, and they'll stick them in here. And the idea is they don't even exist. Uh, they don't take up any time for the processor. When you open the cupboard, or the bureau, that's when it renders them into the game. And when you close it, they go away again. Uh, and that would be super, super easy to do. You just need the clothing assets. Uh, and that's really the weak point of this, is I'd have to build a ton of clothing assets to do that. Uh, I also would like to have the same clothing assets as discarded shapes, so that I can throw them on the floor. Um, so that would be a lot of fun and I don't see it happening no one I don't see anyone else building it so I may have to do something along those lines maybe I'll build the basics and a couple of clothing samples and then open source it and hope other people add their own clothing uh, objects to it either way up here uh, is a nook and a library can you tell which of these library assets is from which asset pack I bet you can't this nook over here is what would be a bathroom, except uh, there are no bathroom assets. There are absolutely no fantasy bathroom assets uh, at all. So uh, it's just kind of implied, doesn't actually exist. If you're wondering why this is all one big open area, in addition to being slightly affluent, um, 
that's you know they're affluent so they can afford to build a big house but there generally aren't any closed off areas in these kinds of houses unless it's like uh, for storage uh, and the reason is because there's no such thing as a ventilation duct and that means that you can only get heat from the central fireplace and that means that you have the setup where the central fireplace is on an internal interior wall and both sides get heated by it and that's the closest thing you can have to a room um, you know a divided room everything else will get freezing cold and if you've ever stayed in a log cabin you're probably familiar with that near the fireplace it's all nice and warm far away from the fireplace it's really cold so I made a lot of modifications to the assets used here first off these beams are from the uh, medieval construction kit whereas the walls are from the fantasy kit uh, originally the beams were the super super bright white bleached wood and so I went in and I changed it up so that I looked a little bit more varnished excuse me a little bit more varnished and fit a little bit better into the basic uh, uh, you know look of the house and I think that it's pretty good um, I left the material unfortunately I need to change out the material entirely uh, so another thing I did is I added in a wobbly fireplace and you can see the shadows on these chairs gently wobble let's see if I can get a good angle here actually it's much clearer in the bedroom here you can see so these gently wobbling fireplaces are really great um, because in a fantasy setting the fire is a live thing uh, you're not having these these cold lights that we have these days you have a fire and the fire wobbles and that really leads to some really nice uh, effects. It makes things feel warm. On the downside, it does mean that you have to you have to use live shadows, and live shadows might be out of your range if you're going for an iPad game, or are going to have very many of them in one setting. My computers never seem to have any problems with it. I think that I might have a specific video card that is just really, really super great at this one thing, um, but I've had problems with other people. You know, at a at a even just one light with shadows can seriously screw up their uh, um, their experience. So you're going to want to have something where every light that has a shadow checks to see whether or not you're set to a low detail level, and if you are, it turns the shadows off just to make it playable. The other thing I did is I added textures to most of these things. Uh, sorry, not textures, materials to most of these things. Originally, all of the assets from the fantasy pack were simple diffuse. The textures are good, but the materials were simple diffuse. And that's fine for what they were aiming for, and that was kind of a long view. Um, they were aiming for a kind of bird's eye view. If you're in first person or close third person, that's not going to work out. And spe specifically, the worst offenders were these chairs and these uh, bricks. Now they are significantly improved over what they used to be because I went in and I created all of the normal maps for all the various um, uh, things that they're using and then I changed all the materials over to bumped diffuse so you have these walls that actually look like they are made out of plaster and you've got this stone system here that looks like it's actually made out of stone um, and you've got wood that makes it that's actually you know looking like wood um, the chair effect is actually really subtle I could punch that up uh, but these are the sorts of tweaks you're gonna have to make when you are putting together asset packs no asset pack works perfectly with what you need even if the asset pack is perfect, it's perfect for what they wanted to do, and not perfect for what you wanted to do. And that means that you're going to have to continually tweak everything you do. Um, and that's where most of your time is probably going to be spent in, you know, up front, when you first start. Still, even with that slightly annoying situation, the end result is that I only spent three hours to create this entire thing. And sure, I wish that there were some personalized elements. Sure, I wish there was a kitchen. I wish there was sinks and water. I wish there was bathrooms. I wish there was clothes. But those are all things that um, that you can consider outside of the scope of that pack. Um, you don't. It's not insulting that they didn't include those. I mean, I didn't pay five hundred dollars for the pack, so I don't expect to get absolutely everything. It would just be nice to have those things. But even without them the level of detail that I've gotten out of this pack is enough that if I stuck people in here, NPCs in here, you would believe that they lived here. It feels like a place you could live. And I didn't design this house, I just threw it together, so it's a little bit awkward. But you could see that, you know, if you walked in here and you saw uh, a guy uh, wandering around over there and a kid running back and forth, you wouldn't feel surprised at all. You wouldn't say, oh, those are so out of place. You'd think, you'd think oh yeah, well, this is their house. 
it looks reasonably lived in. Anyhow, that's what asset packs can do, and if you are thinking about creating something like an, an RPG, I really recommend you look into getting some. Even the disappointing asset packs often have enough assets that you can build what you want to build, even if it's just kind of an approximation. That's it. Oh, I should mention, I added colliders to basically everything. Um, a lot of asset packs don't have colliders on by default. When you're adding a collider, seriously consider adding a box collider rather than a mesh collider. It's very rare that you actually need to have a full mesh collider. So here I've got a box collider, and here I've got box colliders. You almost never need a mesh collider. Box colliders are orders of magnitude less taxing. So uh, it's not difficult, just have to keep your eye on it and make sure that you do what needs to be done. Here you can see the floor, the bump maps on the floor add so much. This is a much, much better look uh, than it looked like when it was flat. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for listening.